When I was little, um, I grew up on the Navajo reservation and my parents were educators. They taught um, Head Start and because they both were working, I spent a lot of time with my grandparents. They lived in a very rural area and these were my mom's parents. We would be out in the middle of nowhere. They were dirt roads and this was a time period um, when some people had cars but a lot of people still had wagons and horses and that's how they got around. I remember waking up early in the morning and hearing my grandfather pumping the kerosene lamps to get them started because there was no electricity. And I would smell bacon and eggs and my grandmother would be making um, tortillas and potatoes for us to eat. My grandfather would be getting ready to go take the sheep out. And I remember just thinking this was a really beautiful time and we would have breakfast together. This cold air would come in in the morning and we would be just being with each other. My grandfather would go out to the corral and I would then help my, my grandmother um, mix milk for the lambs and we would mix up this milk and put them in these large um, containers of Coke and, and 7-Up and put the nipples on and to go out to the corral and feed the lambs. And I also remember part of my job was to siphon out the water because um, we didn't have uh, running water and I would take that hose and siphon out water for the dogs and our dog dish was a tire that my grandfather cut in half and we'd put the food in there and all the dogs would come running and they always had really weird names. Um, I was um, trying to remember some of the names like Mop Bucket and <laughs> um, Daisy, Boots, what's your name? <laughs> Those were really their names. It was really strange, but they'd all come and eat out of this, this trough. And after that, then we would go inside. And in the one room where we all slept, um, there was a bed where my uh, grandma and grandpa slept. It was like a, a queen bed. And they would, we would fix that. And then my uncle's, one of my uncle's beds was off the side. It was a, a twin bed. And all of us, the rest of us slept on mattresses and cushions on the floor. So we would get all those cushions together and fold them up and put them against the wall to, to get the space cleaned up. And this room that we slept in all together was then transformed into my grandmother's studio. She is a traditional Navajo weaver, and we would get that space ready. There were two windows on either side of the room, and the light would be coming in in the morning, and in between the two windows was her loom. And I remember we used to sew these flower sacks together to make these like white sheets that would go over the loom and the rug to keep it clean. And then we would lay out the cushions in front of the loom for my grandmother and a sheepskin for me um, to sit with her because my job was to be with her and be her companion and help her. And she would be carding wool or spinning. And there were times when um, she would make the yarn into these balls. And part of my job was to stand there with my hands out and she would wrap the yarn around my hands. And you know, I'd get tired as a kid and I would just bend over and lay on my back and transfer the yarn over to my feet. <laughs> I'd be laying on my back and I'd be like touching her skirt and just smelling my grandmother and like, Often people would ask me, like, what reminds you of your grandmother? And I'd said, you know, it's been gay. <laughs> <laughs> I'd smell that because she's always 
saying she ached and she would wear that. And I just like, every time I would smell it, I would think of her. And so I'd be with her and she would be talking with me. And as my feet were in the air, she would pet my feet and say beautiful things to me and just encourage me to be a good person. As I started to get older, I started getting into art making and I loved making art and I started making prints in high school, got into printmaking and in undergraduate school. And this question would always come up from people because they'd say, you're an artist? And I'd say, yes. And they'd say, you're Navajo? And I'd say, yes. They'd say, so you must be a traditional Navajo weaver? And I'd say, no. You must make jewelry? No. <laughs> and they'd look at what I'd make, and just sometimes people would be disappointed that I wasn't carrying on this tradition. And so at one point, I asked my grandmother, what do you think of what I'm doing and what I'm making? Sometimes I think I should be weaving like you. And my grandmother said, I didn't grow up going to school or learning um, English. And she's speaking in Navajo. And she says, but the way I see it, you're weaving thoughts and ideas and these designs in a different way, something like I can't do. And in that way, I see you as a traditional weaver. It's really amazing to hear that from my grandmother and gave me strength to move forward with, with what I do. I move forward in my life making art and thinking about and remembering what, this strength she gave me. One day we were driving to um, off the reservation and it's like an hour to get to a town um, from home and we get there and I remember being really little and all the adults were talking in the car dealership and I looked over and they were unraveling and rolling out this rug across the hood of the truck. and. My grandmother was there talking with the car dealer man, and, you know, they were going on, and I was just, you know, you're supposed to be good and sit there. So we were later driving back home in a brand new truck, and I remember my grandpa leaving, leaning towards me and saying, see how important her weaving is? She supported us in many ways, and it was really beautiful. As I move forward in my life, I kept going through this, this questioning. And I was teaching at different universities, and I ended up coming to this university here in Boulder. And I remember there was always this question of, should I be here? I really should be back home. My parents are educators. They've given up everything to be there. Should I be there too? And this weight of like, where should I be? What should I be doing? Was always inside me. My grandmother's had since passed and um, I was asked to help with a project at the university at the Natural History Museum. It turns out our Natural History Museum on campus has one of the largest Navajo rug collections in the US and I helped with this project and all the time I was looking in the database for Thelma Baldwin, looking for her rugs and nothing would come up. So the exhibit comes and I call my parents and my uncle and tell them, you should come to Boulder and see this exhibit that I helped put together. It's really beautiful and there's some rugs from where our people are from and, and you should come see them. So my parents came and I was really excited and we were coming into this room with all of these rugs on the walls and on platforms and my mom got really quiet and I said, I started to point but before I even showed her, she said, 
that's my mom's rug. That's your grandmother's rug. I stop. I look at it. I said, Mom, how do you know? And she says, because I was carrying you, I was pregnant with you when she was weaving that rug. We walk up to the rug and look at the label. And the label says, Mrs. Tom Baldwin. Because during that time, women were known by their husband's names. And all my life, I was told to be a strong Navajo woman and always keeping my name. And it was amazing to find her rugs there. And then my uncle found some other rugs that belonged to her. And then off to the side, I see my dad like getting a little emotional. And I said, Dad, are you OK? What's wrong? And he said, this is my mom's rug. And we're just, we're just like amazed because my, my dad's mom didn't weave a lot of rugs. We look at the label by her rug, and it says anonymous. We call the people at the museum and tell them the story. And they're saying, we're so glad that you could share this. And then I tell myself, this is where I'm supposed to be. They're here, and I'm here. Thank you.